President Obama has acknowledged that a systemic failure of the nation's intelligence and security measures paved the way for last week's aborted bomb attack on a Northwest Airlines flight from Amsterdam to Detroit. Speaking in Hawaii Tuesday, Obama blamed errors in intelligence collecting and sharing procedures for allowing a Nigerian man to smuggle explosives aboard the flight. 23-year-old Umar Farouk Abdulmutallab, the so-called underpants bomber, is the son of a wealthy Nigerian banker, noting that Abdulmutallab his father had previously alerted U.S. authorities about his son's views, the president questioned why his name had not been added to the no-fly list. When our government has information on a known extremist, and that information is not shared and acted upon as it should have been, so that this extremist boards a plane with dangerous explosives that could have cost nearly 300 lives, a systemic failure has occurred, and I consider that totally unacceptable. The reviews I've ordered will surely tell us more, but what already is apparent is that there was a mix of human and systemic failures that contributed to this potential catastrophic breach of security. Obama has ordered two reviews of airport security procedures and the system of watch lists. He said there were several points at which red flags would have been raised, adding he would, quote, insist on accountability at every level. Abdul Muttalib was charged Saturday with attempting to blow up Northwest Airlines Flight 253 and will be tried in civilian court. He's currently being questioned by the FBI and reportedly told them he received his training and explosives from al-Qaeda in Yemen. A group calling itself al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula said in an online statement that it had planned the attack. For more, we go now to Washington, and we also will look at the, how the media has reacted to the attempted bombing and the administration's handling of the case. We're joined by Spencer Ackerman. He's in Washington, D.C., senior reporter for The Washington Independent. He maintains the uh, Tackerman blog at Fire Dog Lake. Welcome to Democracy Now!, Spencer. Um, start morning, off by just explaining um, who this young man is, what we know about him, the charges against him. Abdul Muttalib is a 23-year-old Nigerian citizen who, by all accounts, uh, is rather far from the wretched of the earth. His father uh, is a wealthy Nigerian banker. Uh, he received a very fine education, uh, mostly abroad. And uh, somehow, over the course of the last several years, became increasingly radicalized, seemingly through uh, interactions with extremists online. And uh, we learned from today's New York Times, as you mentioned in the segment earlier, that uh, investigators here are looking at his time um, at college uh, in, in Britain as a potential catalytic moment for his radicalization. I want to get your reaction to uh, some of what various people are saying. Um, this is former Homeland Security Chief Tom Ridge appearing on CNN's Larry King Live. I take a look at this individual who's been charged criminally. Does that mean he's going to get his Miranda warnings? Does that mean the only kind of information we're going to get from him is if he volunteers it? Uh, he's not a citizen of this country. He is a terrorist, uh, and I don't think he deserves the uh, full range of uh, uh, criminal protections of our criminal justice system as embodied in the Constitution of the United States. Um, I also wanted to uh, play an excerpt of you, Spencer Ackerman. You were on MSNBC's Morning Joe on Tuesday debating Pat Buchanan on the subject. This is a clip from that discussion. What I'm saying is the first and highest priority when you apprehend him is not to make sure he gets his constitutional rights, he's not even a citizen, but to get all of the information you can about where he came from, who trained him, where they are, are there other attacks coming, where are they coming, and if that means, frankly, you have to deny him pain medicine because it's guy's badly burned, I think you go ahead and do that. I'm not arguing for torture, but I am arguing. Yeah, nobody is, but I'm arguing for hostile interrogation of this fellow because our job is to protect American lives. It's not to make sure his Miranda rights uh, haven't been violated. That was Pat Buchanan. You were debating him. Spencer Ackerman, your response. 
I, like I said to, to Pat on Morning Joe, this is a completely invented controversy. Um, I've been in contact uh, with intelligence officials for the last couple days, as a lot of my colleagues have. And one thing that we have not heard at all is that the FBI has had any problem extracting information legally, humanely, and in accordance with our criminal justice system from Abdul Muttalib. The idea that we need to torture this man in order to prevent some kind of, of follow-on plot, or I, I don't even know what you know, Buchanan's mind has run to in this sort of thing, is absolutely belied by the facts of the actual circumstance. The man has been charged in federal court. He will receive his day in court. He will undoubtedly be convicted because of the overwhelming amount of evidence, both on his person and eyewitness evidence, on Northwest Airlines Flight 253. This is, as we—I think it's pretty uncontroversial to say, the system actually working in a legal context. I was quite surprised to see this debate going on right now. The anger at um, Abdul Muttala being charged as uh, in a U.S. court, as opposed to I, I think Pat Buchanan was saying things like, you know, why would he even be given pain medication if he was burned? All we need is information from him. The whole issue of torturing right. what we need subjects. to do is commit a war crime, basically. But this I, whole I mean, discussion it's, it's of him disgusting. being tried in a U.S. court, talk about that. As, as if convicting him in a U.S. court is somehow less of a conviction. I, it, it, it's hard to even—it's hard to know, Amy, how to—if I should take this seriously or not, you know? Is, is it an actual objection? And if so, it would be presumably based on an actual emergent problem. But there is no actually emergent problem. There's no, you know, bar to convicting the guy. There's overwhelming amounts of evidence. Otherwise, they wouldn't have indicted him. Otherwise, there wouldn't already be this process moving forward. Um, Obama, if there's anything—and we can talk about what Obama said in Hawaii um, in a moment—but if there's anything encouraging about the way Obama and the administration is handling it, it's, it's that his first instinct and the Justice Department's first instinct was not to declare him an enemy combatant, was not to take him um, to uh, some prison overseas, was not to say that he couldn't be tried um, in the normal justice system, but to actually have FBI officials on the scene uh, conduct an investigation of him, to question him, to extract information from him, and then to bring charges against him when it was clear that information leading to a prosecution was in evidence. So if there's, you know, any bright side from the immediate aftermath of the touchdown of Flight 253, it's, it's that. And to see, you know, Tom Ridge, who was Homeland Security Secretary, when Richard Reed, the shoe bomber, in late 2001, was charged, tried and convicted in a civilian prison, suddenly saying that this is insufficient and an outrage and so on and so forth, is, is just too hypocritical and ridiculous to take seriously. Uh, President Obama's response, Spencer Ackerman. Yeah. Talk about it. Um, so, 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 okay, so let's take first the, the policy implications of what he said, and then, then let's deal with the politics, if, if you've got time for that. Yes. Um, on, on, the, on, on what Obama called systemic failures, um, it's important to point out that these do not appear, based on the information that we have right now, so take that as my caveat, that these are actually intelligence failures. Um, if they were intelligence failures, it would mean that we had a lack of inputs for understanding the guy um, was dangerous. What we had was probably one of the strongest possible inputs for understanding that, and that's his father going into the U.S. Embassy in Abuja, Nigeria, on November 19th, and saying he was concerned about his son's radicalization. In the actual existing world of intelligence, that's pretty good. That's really good for what you're going to get. The problem is, and we can now debate, as we, we surely will next month when, when there are congressional hearings on this, whether that's actually sufficient to put someone on the no-fly list. And I'll explain what I mean by that. The way the procedure works is, as what happened after uh, the father's walk into the embassy in Abuja, he goes on something called the Tide List, which is sort of a database around the government in both the intelligence community and the law enforcement community um, and the diplomatic community of people you have sort of pre-probable cause suspicion about. There are reportedly about 550,000 individuals or pieces of data on that list. What's supposed to happen from there and what did happen in this case was that an interagency review occurred asking, do we have enough information 
to recommend this individual to a further list called the Terrorist Screening Database. And what happens is the— um, the FBI, the intelligence community, the National Counterterrorism Center, um, the State Department, the Department of Homeland Security evaluate that question according to a criteria. 